fire procedures, uh, there is no flame fire drills this morning, so uh, fire alarm goes off its reel by the nearest escape route. There's a link. Um, actually, there's no one here from who was on the last license who can see if there's any objections or. Um, with no apologies, um, I have Councillor Susan Ellis with me, thank you, Jonathan Bacon. Um, do we have any declarations of interest? Uh, and I've not been made aware of any of things. Um, so this application is for, to determine application for a premises license under section 17 of the Licensing Act 2003, Lazy Wave Cafe 28 Esplanade Shank. So we've only got uh, the applicant here. Um, thank you very much, and no one else has made themselves available. So I believe we can move straight over to the licensing officer. Shane. Thank you. An application for a premises license was submitted on 22nd of June 2023 by Mrs. Ray Rawlins. Premises concerned is located at 2A Esplanade, Shanklin, Isle of Wight, PO 376BN. As part of the 28 day consultation exercise, the applicant has agreed to conditions with the police authority. These conditions will look to uphold and promote the four licensing objectives with the objective for the prevention of crime and disorder primarily in mind. Details of the agreed conditions can be found at appendix two, page 29 of the report. Mrs. Rawlins has, as part of her application for a premises license, documented measures that will be undertaken should the license be deemed granted which will look for, to further promote and uphold the objectives. These can be found within the application's operating schedule at Appendix 1, page 24. Should the subcommittee determine to grant the licence in whatever form, any relevant measures contained within the application's operating schedule will be converted into enforceable conditions and will form part of the granted licence. Following the 28-day consultation period, 12 representations remain outstanding. To summarise, concerns raised state that the granting of the premises licence as per application and agreed conditions between the applicant and the police will be likely to have an adverse impact upon nearby residents and businesses with regards to noise disturbance and antisocial behaviour. Representations go further to state that antisocial behaviour in the form of increased littering and criminal damage will likely to occur should the application for a premises licence be granted. Full details of all concerns raised can be found at Appendix 5, page 35 to 50 of the report. In relation to concerns that have been raised in relation to the um, to potential for noise disturbance, Environmental Health, the lead authority for the objective for the prevention of public nuisance, have not raised any concerns. Details of the factors and considerations that Environmental Health have taken in coming to their determination can be found at Appendix 4, pages 33 and 34, as well as Appendix 7, pages 51 and 52 of the report. Other concerns have been raised, such as the lack of toilet provision for customers and that there are, is already a sufficient amount of licensed premises within the vicinity to where the application relates to. I must remind the committee at this moment that such concerns cannot be controlled or addressed by either the Licensing Act 2003 legislation, Section 182 guidance, or the local authority's licensing policy, all of which the subcommittee must have regard to today when determining the application. So just to summarise, the options open to the subcommittee today are to grant the proposed ap um, application as requested by the applicant, grant the proposed application, but with additional conditions as they may deem appropriate and proportionate to promote the licensing objectives, or to reject the proposed application. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Um, can I just confirm we had the chance to read the report as I might? Thank you very much. Um, over to you, sir. Would you like to make your case? Sorry, Sorry over there. Sorry. Do we have any questions? Are we obviously. 
uh, one question if possible. Um, sorry, but uh, in the summary of what the objectors were saying, um, you used the phrase there was a fear of increased littering and criminal damage. Is there, that seems to indicate there's a problem of that nature in that area already. Can you provide yeah. any further information? Uh, of course. Um, to, yeah, it, the, the points were discussed with the police authority um, prior to and after um, they agreed conditions with the applicant. Um, there hasn't been any um, reported instances of, of antisocial behaviour or criminal damage reported to the police within the vicinity of the, of the licensed premises. Um, that aside, even if there were, um, you, 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 could, you couldn't really have regard to that when determining the application. But no, there haven't been any reported instances um, put forward by the police. Sorry, sir, um, over to you. There we go. OK, we can all in on something. Um, I can't say much more than that has already been written down, to be honest. Um, I consider us a principal family. Um, everything we do has and shall continue to be considerate to people around us. Any improvements that I've made or changes to the business, some of them not liked for some silly little things like we don't sell sandwiches and hot food, unfortunately. We consider it a dessert parlour. Um, I don't know where to go with this, really. I was surprised about the objections. I didn't see an adverse impact in the community just because of the way it's situated. Um, from that, I don't know how to pronounce my words better, any, any better than we've actually written down. Sorry, I've gone blank. I'm sorry. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, apart from that, the only thing I can say is um, the evidence is there. And I'll, I'll leave it with you guys. Really. Sorry. So can I ask, in your opinion, I think the most the most sort of striking thing for me around the objections um, would be that people believe there's going to be an incre increase in noise nuisance, an increase in antisocial behaviour, etc. My feeling, having read through it, is that it it's probably unlikely, and if there was any, it would be minimal. I mean, I presume that what you're looking to do is to sell alcohol as part of your, your selling your meals, et cetera, rather than you're trying to open a, a purely sort of a drinking establishment. 100% correct. Um, as we stated in one statement, we are and always shall be a dessert parlor that would like to sell an occasional beer or drink to the members of the family. Um, we get a lot of customers come up Mum, dad, kids, they all enjoy what they do. And dad says, have you got a beer? One say, no, sorry. They go, well, why not? You've got the prime location. Everyone and anyone who's on holiday, not everybody, but enjoys a drink occasionally. It's not to get drunk. And one of the ways we aimed to stop people getting drunk was to opt for an earlier closing time. I looked at it from a broad spectrum and thought, what do people usually do? When they want to, to get drunk, they drink late. So I thought, oh, right, OK, well, we normally close at 8 anyway. We'll continue to close at 8. The only reason we're looking for a premises license till 9 is because on unique days like regatta, fireworks, where we do close a little bit later, that people aren't getting upset because we're still open and trading. Going, yeah, you can have anything you want, but you can't have that. And then it's sort of like a... I see that as a confrontation issue is you've just served the last man two minutes ago. Why won't you serve me? That was the only reason we opted for the 9 p.m. closing time. Cut off time. 
Um, other than that, I personally didn't see an issue. Uh, we're not a bar. It's not a nightclub district. Anybody, I mean, you've got pubs and clubs, not clubs, but pubs and bars around us, close, and they don't seem to have an issue with it. And they close later. That walk past us, I mean, not to name names, but the Fisherman's Cottage directly behind us, I have to walk past our venue in order to get home every single time because they are on the very end. So if they aren't stopping and staying drunk on our seats already in the open air, why would they in the future? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ellis asked a good question, essentially, I was going to answer, and it's really to just get a picture of how the place operates. And um, I suppose just what I'd like is if you could expand a little on how you operate over the year. I get the impression you're not a seven days a week, um, 365 days operation. So are you open every day? Will you always use the hours? I think you partly answered that, but what's your intention using the hours if you're granted them in this application? How does your business model work in season, out of season? Good question. So weather reliant. That's the best answer I can give you. Sunny weather. February half term, we open up for season and we continue to stay open as much as we possibly can up until the 31st of October. Permitting if there is exceptionally good weather, for instance, this year might be predicting it, will open later into November. Um, apart from that, the hours we open 10 a.m. till 6 p.m when the children are at school, so out of season. And as soon as holidays arise, so February half term, Easter, uh, Maybank holiday, etc., our hours extend from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, although we say 8 p.m., it's very loosely used. So if the queue is there, we tend to serve the people um, until the queue finishes and the staff know when the queue is done, usually about 20 past eight, we stop serving close up, take an hour to clean, and everybody goes home. Um, that, that is pretty much it. We have no intention of opening in the winter, never can, well, due to weather. But uh, the license was there, so it didn't time our hands, let's say. So if we get a really decent November, I don't want to say, sorry, guys, you can't have no work because we can't open. Pretty much it. And... So eight o'clock is the standard closing time in holiday season, subject to the length of the queue. How many occasions are those she referred to earlier where we will stay up until nine because there's something going on? How often is that? Realistically, about seven days in a year. Um, quite literally, it has to be in a special event. My staff, they have lives too. They need to go back. Um, get their dinner, whatnot. Um, I run a secondary cafe up in the old village with my wife. We basically run both businesses as a family. Uh, so about seven, if that. Um, thank you. So in the objections that have been made, there's, um, they refer to increased footfall, cars, litter and noise. You've got a number of residential properties overlooking the cafe. What's your response to, to that? I mean, how many people are we talking about footfall um, with, you know, the cafe? On average, we get between 100 and 200 customers a day. That's paying customers. So one person might be paying for a family of five, let's say. So it's hard to dictate exactly how many people we serve. Um, in terms of increased footfall, I don't see any. If you see this calf, if it got one foot low below ground level, it'd be in the sea. That's how close it is to the sea. We get bashed with waves on bad winter days. So in the sense of footfall, there wouldn't be any. I can't see it. This is only to basically help increase a small portion of revenue that the calf needs to keep going as a small business. Litter, 
we have our own bins in place. We do keep our place tidy. There are council bins just outside the, the cafe. Excuse me. Um, we've never had an issue before. Um, in terms of drinking, causing litter, I can't personally see it. We're going to serve all our drinks in plastic cups, yes. But we will be enforcing that they cannot leave the premises. There's going to be signs, and all the exits are direct line of sight of the server, basically, whoever is serving that day. So that I don't think so. In terms of noise, people are noisy. I get that. Um, they're not always noisy, and adding alcohol to the mix doesn't necessarily make them noisy, unless they're drunk. And unfortunately, I don't plan on serving drunks. That's not the aim. Um, so the impact around us, if there was an issue already or has been in the past three years that we've been trading, then I could understand, realistically, so hold my hands up and say, okay, you've already had a problem and this is only going to help fuel the flame. But I am considerate. We do take resonance into account when making improvements or changing anything. So I personally think that this is, well, has completely blown out of proportion compared to what we're asking for. Thank you. And then I'm guessing there's going to be no change in demographic. It's not, you're not advertising as, a, as an alcohol establishment, so it's going to be existing customers that are already there for the daytime that just want to have an extra drink to sat down. Correct. Um, we are, and always shall be, a dessert parlour serve the customers we've always served and hopefully just provide that little bit more of a service. I want to say one thing. Um, you referred to plastic cups. Will you try and make sure they're recyclable? <laughs> so I do the climate change part in the council. So. <laughs> um, Currently at the minute, we do use the same plastic cups because we sell slush puppies and ice cream and we have a three-step range of cups. We do recycle them when people help. Unfortunately, trying to control the people is another game. Basically, I took on, if you've ever seen it, the McDonald's bin system. They have a funnel for the liquids and then next to it, you have a tube. You drop the cups in the tube and they all stack inside of each other, makes it easy. There is a bin right there as well. If some people choose not to, unfortunately, again, you can't control them. They, they do just chuck it in the bin. It's not 100% bulletproof, but that's the road we've gone up. I might add one more thing to that as well, considering the environment. Um, things have been changing over time straws, plastic, now polystyrene boxes, which unfortunately we have used in the past and now have to convert to cardboard. Um, one thing we might consider adopting in the future if plastic cups get banned is something that they use abroad usually. It's a rigid plastic cup that does get washed up and reused. And that's something we're actually thinking about using in the future just save money basically that's the aim of it any comments from any other relevant authorities no chair um as you will see the relevant authorities or responsible authorities aren't here but mr um power has made a representation at appendix seven from environmental health yes thank you i'll see that I'm sure Mr. Bachelor will, will sum up shortly. Um, it just gives Mr. Rowling the opportunity if he wants to say anything more before we move into summing up as a part of his summing up as well. Have you got anything else to say, Mr. Bachelor? No, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I said and stick by it. Thank you. Um, nothing 
<laughs> really much further to add. Um, one, one particular point um, in relation to um, concerns that have been raised uh, about noise nuisance. Um, obviously, people noise, unfortunately, is not a licensable activity defined as a licensable activity. Um, so that can't be controlled under licence. However, um, environmental health under the Environmental Protection Act, um, they have powers to deal with um, people noise, if you like, or disturbance to residents or businesses nearby a licensed premises or, or any other premises, should complaints be received and should they be substantiated. So um, even though the Licensing Act can't directly address that concern, um, there is an, no, another way to address that concern, and that would be our environmental health. Okay. Um, so really, the licensing authority takes the view that the conditions agreed between the applicant and the police, as well as measures that the applicant has committed to within the operating schedule, um, which will be converted into enforceable conditions should the license be granted. They're, they are both proportionate and appropriate when considering the nature of the business, um, inclusive of the times and the activities that are being proposed by the applicant. Um, members should determine the application in accordance with Section 35 of the Licensing Act 2003 and the Licensing Act Hearings Regulations 2005. But just to remind the committee, the options open to you are to grant the licence as requested, requested by the applicant, um, grant the licence but with any additional conditions that you may deem appropriate and proportionate to promote the licensing objectives. The final option um, for the committee will be to reject the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Batcher. OK, so uh, we're going to retire to another room to, to consider the, uh, the decision and we'll come back to you as soon as possible.
Thank you very much, everyone. So it's 10.35, um, very quick meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is a uh, decision. It's a licensing subcommittee on Friday, 18th of August, 2023, in respect of an application for a premises license at Leasy Wave Cafe at 2 ES Blade Shanklin, Isle of Wight. And before councillors Gary Peace, the Chairman, Jonathan Bacon and Susie Ellis. Uh, upon receiving the report of the licensing section, oral and written evidence from the applicant, written evidence from the responsible authorities and other persons, and having regard to the guidance issued under section 182 of the Licensing Act 2003 and the Isle of Wight Council Statement of Licensing Policy, the subcommittee hereby grants the license in accordance with the application, subject to those, mand uh, those conditions proposed by the applicant within the operating schedule, and also subject to the mandatory conditions specified in the Licensing Act 2003, but modified to such an extent as members have considered appropriate for the promotion of the four licensing objectives, namely by requiring the following conditions. Those conditions agreed between the applicant and the police on page 29 of the report. The reasons for doing so are as per the reasons given within the same report in order to promote the licensing objectives and in particular the prevention of crime and disorder and in accordance with the Isle of Wight Council Statement of Licensing Policy and the Section 182 guidance. In reaching the above decision, the subcommittee have had regard to the Human Rights Act 1998, and in particular Article 1 of the First Protocol, Article 8 and Article 6. The subcommittee consider this decision is proportionate and appropriate for the promotion of the four licensing objectives under the Licensing Act 2003. There is a right of appeal to the Magistrates Court if anyone is dissatisfied with this decision, and any appeal must be made within 21 days of the date of notification. And that being the uh, subcommittee's decision, Chairman, I'll ask you to sign that. Thank you. Thank you all. That's the meeting at close at um, 10.38. Thank you. Thank you very much.